Hello together. In this video, I'll show you how the queries we have created earlier can be controlled automatically by using, for example, VBA. One possibility to update the queries automatically is via the settings of the query editor. To get to it, you have to click into the table of the query and then up in the query tools, click to properties and then here at update control, you can activate the update. So for example, you can trigger it automatically once per second, but once, uh, once per minute, but one minute can be relatively long. So for some applications, it might be enough, but if it's not enough, you need to make automate the query with a macro. A macro can be created via the developer tools. So if you can't find the developer tools at the top, then you can activate it by clicking on the following file, options, customize the menu, and then you have to check the box for the developer tools. If the developer tools are activated, then you can find here in the developer tools, the field visual basic. But before I start programming Visual Basic, I should give my tables a proper name. So for example, we can call the first table query and the second table we can call temp. If this is done, then I can open the Visual Basic editor. After opening the editor, I find my programming area here and on the left side, I can see my VBA project and my current folder. To add an update now, uh, I have to add a new module to the first project. And in this module, we can program freely and also access all tables. Our first function should be the function for automatically updating the files. But first I need the function and this is called sub and then I give the function a name and then I have created my function. So now the function has to be filled with appropriate content. So in our case, this is the function to update the connection. This connection is in the workbook. So in this workbook, so I start with typing this workbook. That's our starting point dot and now we have created a connection here. So uh, we need dot connection and in brackets, we need the index of the connection. As we have only one connection, it is one. It is also possible to give a name for the query and you can enter the name here, but uh, we just have to do it with the one dot refresh is the next we have to do because we want to update the values. So that's it actually. This means uh, I can act, uh, already execute the function here. I can execute a function, for example, by simply clicking into this sub and then via F5 or via the play button up here. Now we have not seen anything because I have not changed the value yet. Now I do it here once uh, by triggering the sensor several times. Then I execute the function again and you can see how the process value changes accordingly. As we do not always want to click into the VBA program to start this function, we go right back into our workbook and um, at the developer tools, we can add a button. We just now have to assign the button a macro and in this case it is our refresh macro which we have just created. From now on every time I click on the button the macro will be executed. So when I trigger the sensor for a few times again and click on the sensor uh, on the button the process value is going to get updated accordingly. Now our first step towards an automatic query is made and we have to execute one after another uh, the refresh and therefore we need to program a loop. 
For the program of a loop, it is important that we always have the possibility to stop it. The easiest way to do this is to find one of the cells. So if there is an X in this cell, the marker is running. If I delete the X, um, the marker is stopping. So I can just add active, activate macro here. And then I can go back to the VBA program. I have already prepared the code and will now insert it in here. I just want to explain this briefly one after another. So we have one if uh, request and that means that uh, it will be checked whether the following statement is true. So we would check whether in this workbook in the worksheet query, uh, which we called query before, the cell E5 has the value X. So cell E5, this is what we have just defined here. So if there's an X, X in here, um, the macro is, should keep running. So if that is true, so that if there's an X in there, we have the, we want to start the function application on time. So this means that uh, the following application, so the one I add afterwards, um, in this case, refresh, gets called again, now plus one second. So this means that if in the cell E5 contains an X, and if we start the macro once, then this function is executed and repeated every second. As soon as there is no X in cell E5, the macro gets stopped and we will not longer uh, and will not longer be executed. So now we can just test this by inserting the X here at activate macro and start the macro once via the button. So now you can already see that something is happening. I will increase the value by triggering the sensor a few times and you can also uh, have a look at the counter. Now if I change the value, then you can see how this value is um, updated accordingly. So now we have an automatic refresh of the value. To stop the value, you just have to click here and delete the X. And then the macro is deactivated again. To activate it again, you have to um, enter the X and click on the button. Then it started again. So that's it actually about uh, the first example of uh, how to integrate a web service and what to do with the web service with VBA. Of course you can, for example, automatically copy this value and paste it into another page um, and can create an um, automatic graph, for example, and all the stuff like this. So best way to do this here in Excel would be by using VBA because uh, there you can do lots and lots of stuff. So that's what, that's it. And thanks for watching.